Welcome to Senior High School Math Series. Let us have normal random variables under statistics and probability. Quarter 3, Week 3, based on curriculum implementation and learning management matrix for K-12's most essential learning competencies. Here are our learning competencies. Illustrate normal random variable and its characteristics. Construct the normal curve. Convert a normal random variable to a standard normal variable and vice versa. Before we continue, let us have this verse. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. This is from Philippians chapter 4 verse 9 of the King James Bible. Let us introduce the lesson with ponder on this. Many continuous variables have distributions that are bell-shaped. These are called approximately normally distributed variables. For example, if a researcher selects a random sample of 100 senior high school students in Caloacan City, measures their heights, and constructs a histogram, the researcher might get something similar to the one shown. Once the researcher increases the sample size and decreases the class width, the graphs will be similar to these ones. Increase sample with decrease class width, and further increase sample size and decrease class width. Further increase in the sample size and decrease in the class width will make the histogram look like the one shown. The distribution becomes a symmetrical bell-shaped curve, also known as the Gaussian distribution, named after the German mathematician Carl Friedrich Gauss, who derived its equation. Let us have this definition. A normal distribution is a continuous, symmetric, and bell-shaped distribution of a variable. If the majority of the data values fall either to the left or right of the mean, then the distribution is said to be skewed. The distribution is said to be a negatively or left skewed distribution when the majority of the data values fall to the right of the mean. Here, the mean is to the left of the median, and the mean and the median are to the left of the mode. On the other hand, the distribution is said to be a positively or right skewed distribution when the majority of the data values fall to the left of the mean. Here, the mean falls to the right of the median, and the mean and the median are to the right of the mode. Properties of the normal curve Number 1. The normal distribution curve is bell-shaped. The curve is symmetric about the mean. The mean, median, and mode are equal and are located at the center of the distribution. The normal distribution curve is unimodal, which means it has only one mode. The curve is continuous. There are no gaps or holes. Number six. The total area under the normal distribution curve is 1, or 100%, that is 0.5 or 50% to each side of a vertical line drawn from the center. Next, let us have the standard score or the z-score. The z-score is the equivalent value of a raw score in terms of the mean and standard deviation in a distribution. It tells how many standard deviations a particular score is above or below the mean. 
The z-score for a particular score or value is obtained by subtracting the mean from the value and dividing the result by the standard deviation. Hence, z is equal to x minus mu over lowercase sigma. In here, z is the standard score, x is the raw score or value or the particular score, mu is the mean of the distribution, and sigma is the standard deviation of the distribution. Let us have an example. Number one, in a quarterly examination for general mathematics, a student is scored 73. If the mean is 50 and the standard deviation is 9, calculate the student's z-score. Let us get the given information from the problem. x or the raw score is 73. Mu or the mean is 50. And sigma or the standard deviation is equal to 9. From the formula, z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. Let us substitute the given values. Then we will have z is equal to 73 minus 50 divided by 9. 73 minus 50 is 23. Hence, the student's z score is equal to 2.56. If the z score is positive, the score is above the mean. And if the z-score is negative, the score is below the mean. And if the z-score is 0, then the score is equal to the mean. Let us have example number 2. During the second day of quarterly examination, Jody took the test in oral communications and English for academic and professional purposes. She got 36 in oral communications and 96 in EAPP. The mean and standard deviation of the class in oral communications are 40 and 5 respectively, while the mean and standard deviation of the class in EAPP are 110 respectively. Compare her relative positions on the two tests. Let us have the given information. Let x sub z be the Jody's raw score in oral communication. So that is 36. Then mu sub z be the mean of the class in oral communication. That is 40. Sigma sub z be the standard deviation of the class in oral communication that is equal to 5. For the other subject, x sub e that is for the Jody's row score in EAPP 96 and mu sub e that is the class mean in the EAPP that is 100 and sigma sub e be equal to 10 that is the standard deviation of the class in EAPP. Let us solve for Jody's Z-score in oral communication. That will be 36 minus 40 divided by 5. 36 minus 40 is negative 4. Negative 4 over 5 is negative 0 0.8. Next, let us solve for Jody's Z-score in EAPP. That will be 96 minus 100 divided by 10. 96 minus 100 is negative 4. Negative 4 over 10 is negative 0.4. Negative 0.4 is higher than negative 0.8. Hence, the relative position is higher in EAPP than in oral communications. Let us have another example, number three. The average annual income of an employed individual in the city is 225,350 pesos. 
Assume that the standard deviation is 45,168 pesos. Find the salary of an individual corresponding to a Z-score of negative 1.6. Let us have the given information. The mean is 225,350. The standard deviation is 45,168. And the Z-score is negative 1.6. This time, we are looking for the standard score or the salary of an individual in the city. Again, let us use the formula for z-score that is x minus mean over the standard deviation. Since we're looking for the raw score or the annual salary of an individual, we need to derive the formula for x in terms of the other variables. Multiplying both sides by sigma, we will get z sigma is equal to x minus mu. Adding mu to both sides, that will be negative mu plus mu on the right side, 0. And on the left side, that is z sigma plus mu. And then putting x in the left-hand side of the equation and the other variables in the right-hand side, we will have x is equal to z sigma plus mu. Now, we substitute the given values to the formula. Then, we will have x is equal to negative 1.6 times 45,168 plus 225,350. Negative 1.6 times 45,168 is negative 72,268.8 plus 225,350. We will get the annual income of an individual with z-score of negative 1.6. That is 153,081 pesos and 20 centavos. This time, let us have some practice exercises. In the practice exercises, you will be given 15 seconds for you to answer the problem. You may pause the video if you need more time and play it again to check whether your answer is correct. Number one, the final exams of grade 11 STEM in free calculus has a mean of 85 and a standard deviation of 4. Find the corresponding z-score for each of the following raw score. Letter A, 82. Letter B, 76. Letter C, 93. Go. Time is up. Let us see the answers. For student A, the raw score is 82. So we substitute the values and look for the z-score of student A. That is 82 minus the mean 85 divided by the standard deviation that is 4. Hence, we have 82 minus 85 is negative 3 negative 3 over 4, that is negative 0.75. For student B, x is 76, so we have the z-score for student B is 76 minus 85 divided by 4. 76 minus 85 is negative 9. Negative 9 divided by 4, that is negative 2 
4.25 and then the Z score for student C X is 93 so we have 93 minus 85 divided by 4 93 minus 85 is 8 divided by 4 then the z-score for student C is 2.00. Practice exercise number 2. Former Finance Secretary Cesar Purisima said that at an average 1,500 cargo containers of balikbayan boxes are brought in the country per month. Assume that the standard deviation is 275. Find the Z-score of a particular month where 1,700 cargo containers entered the country. Go! Time is up. Let us check the answers. So we have the given mean is 1,500. The standard deviation is 275. The value for X, that is the number of cargo containers that entered the country for a particular month, 1,700. So substituting the values, we have Z is equal to 1,700 minus 1,500 divided by 275. 1,700 minus 1,500, that is 200 divided by 275. Then the Z-score is 0.73. Next, practice exercise number 3. A grade 12 student had a Z-score of negative 1.2 in a basic calculus test with a mean of 60.5 and a standard deviation of 9.87. Find the student's raw score. Go! Time is up. Let us get the given information. So the Z-score is negative 1.2. Mean is 60.5. And the standard deviation is 9.87. So this time we're looking for the raw score of the student. X is equal to Z sigma plus mu. Substituting the values, we have negative 1.2 times 9.87 plus 60.5 that is the mean so x is equal to negative 11.844 that is from the product negative 1.2 times 9.87 then we have 48.656 if the student score is an integer then the student's score is 49 exercises for this topic may be downloaded from the link given on the video that will be all thank you for watching please subscribe for more math lessons